Welcome to the Moving Past You radio show, a show about identifying, confronting, and embracing the obstacles that block and delay us in walking in our divine purpose. Each week, we delve into the complexities and rewards of walking in your purpose. Now, here's your host, Juanita Gaynor. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this evening. I know it has been a while since you have heard from us. We have taken a little hiatus. Um, We wrapped season three early and we are here with season four and we're opening season four a little bit differently. We are starting with the speakers that we had from Holy Week. And they did the seven last words of Jesus Christ. So starting from Palm Sunday all the way down to Good Friday, there was an additional speaker that spoke on a particular topic. This was hosted in conjunction with my good friend, Minister Keisha L. Peterson, who is the founder of the Absolute Word Ministries and also um, my ministry, which is Restored to Life Ministries. We hope that you are blessed, that you receive a great word, and we will see you on next week when we are live again. But from this week, you will hear all of the speakers from Holy Week Celebration. Be blessed, have a great one, and see you in the cyber world. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the seven last words of Christ, our Holy Week Celebration. That's right. We are doing it big and we are on night number five. And when I tell you it has been amazing so far, it's been amazing what we've had, what's been going on. We are just so blessed to be, have been given these amazing speakers that we have. And so what I'm going to do is, of course, before get and do that. Let me just do some other housekeeping. So if you are watching us on the event page, you can watch us on the Facebook event page, or you can catch us on the Absolute Word Ministries or Restore to Life's Facebook page, or you can search on YouTube for Restore to Life Ministries, and you can watch there as well. Now, what I'm going to do is bring my good old friend, Minister Peterson, up to the stage. Hi, boo. You're muted. I need I you to unmute yourself. I guess I wasn't ready tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Why? I said, oh. I said I'm going to be ready tonight. I got it. I'm going to be ready tonight. And I forgot to unmute myself. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It has been such an awesome and amazing week that we have been discussing the seven last words of Jesus Christ. I tell you, my speakers have come, and I say my speakers because I asked them, but they are not really mine. They belong to God. And They have come above and beyond, you know, I, I, you know, I've been in their place, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I I, I don't, okay, yes, you know, the Lord has given me this mandate, yes, I, you know, and and you kind of don't have the courage in yourself or or the, uh, what do they call the esteem of yourself when God did not put us here to leave us. Amen. So I am so excited and I am just, I'm looking forward to tonight and I'm sorry. I know I don't want to put too much pressure on her, but I love to hear our next speaker speak and I'll be glad when she realizes this. And this is why I ask her. (laughs) So with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over into your hands, Minister Juanita. Great. You can just sit on the screen and be cute and pretty because um, like I've been saying every night, um, the holy, the God gave Minister Peterson the idea for the flow for this year. Um, this would make the third year that we've done this. And we've always wanted something different. We never went with the norm. You know, we're we're different people in Christ. And so when she brought it to me, I was like, flow with it. 
And again, it is just a testament of not only the personal relationship, but the spiritual relationship that we have, that we can trust each other's businesses and ministries in one another's hand and not have to worry about if they're not going to do something right or proper or correct. So um, that is just a, a full testament to what God has done and how we move and operate in his being. And with that being said, we are going to go ahead and start discussing Holy Week. Like we really want to break it down because it correlates into the final, you know, what they say, Good Friday. It all correlates. And it's amazing if you listen to each saying, it it perfectly correlates into each activity of the day that has happened. And it is amazing. It's like those words came from each encounter that Christ had over the week. So let's talk about Holy Week or it's also called Passion Week. And if you really want to deep dive and go more into it, I suggest you read Matthew chapters 21 through 27. It goes into this entire week in detail. Now, Sunday started the week off. You know, Palm Sunday, this was when he was being led into the city and um, people was crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, laying palms before him saying the king is here. But what they thought was the king arising, God was preparing for the final, the final reveal. And so we go into Monday, you know, after that, you know, the spirits are high. Everyone has thought that, you know, we got our king. But then now Monday comes. And Jesus is like, I'm going to clean my father's house because I'm tired of y'all acting crazy in it. I'm tired of y'all acting like you ain't got no sense. You're not supposed to be selling up in here, doing whatever you want. It's not happening. So now we roll to Tuesday. Now they mad because they're like, wait a minute, what's going on? You know, well, maybe, you know, something happened the night before and he wasn't happy. So when Tuesday rolls around and he starts to confront the Jewish leaders for their hypocrisy, Now they needed to do something because their thing was, is that you're supposed to be the king to deliver us and bring wrath down on other people. How dare you hold us accountable for something? How dare you? So now they have to think, how can we get into the inner circle? How can we get him? Wednesday, Judas is bribed to portray portray Jesus. So they found an end. They found someone who was challenged for money, who, you know, he believed, but then he was always that hustler, always trying to get to the next thing, you know? And so he's like, okay, I got some little money. I can tell you where it is. It's not going to really cause me no issue. So I'm just going to be fine. Today, what they call Holy Thursday, it's also the Last Supper. It is the last time that Jesus sat down with his disciples and broke bread with them. But it is also the day that Jesus is betrayed by Judas. It is also the day that Peter denies him. And so when we come into the word that is going to be spoken on today is I thirst. And it correlates well to the happenings of the day. Now, if you want to go more into detail of the Last Supper and the portrayal of Judas, um, Judas's betrayal and Peter denying him, go to Matthew 26, 17 through 75. And that goes greatly into great detail of that. Now, before, 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 before. I fully introduce our speaker. I'm going to bring um, our speaker up for just some words of encouragement. Just one or two words of encouragement um, to get us started on this journey. Well, blessings, blessings, blessings to Yahweh be the glory, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. And I'm this is I'm your sister Deborah, aka Vinice Capers, right? That's the name my mama gave me, but the Lord calls me Deborah. And if I can give you any level of encouragement in this hour, is to walk in your authenticity. The time for walking after 
the likeness and the trends and the clicks and the cliches of others that does not delight the Lord is over. I feel his presence. Hallelujah. So it it's important that you take those dead skins off, those dead clothes off and put on your true authentic self, your divine nature. Yeah. So now is the hour to be accepting, loving and appreciative of the divine nature in what the Holy One of Israel has imparted into you and privilege you to have. That's my words of encouragement. <laughs> I hear you. I see your shana now, sister. I see your shana. Oh, just, just mess me up. Just mess me up all the way. And with that being said, let me go ahead and introduce our speaker of the hour, Prophetess Capers. Prophetess Deborah Capers is a native New Yorker, now living in Raleigh, North Carolina. She has been graced to raise four kings, which is her greatest honor. She is a four-time self-published author and a certified life coach and speaker. She is also the founder of Shake Your City International Ministries that is also based in Raleigh, North Carolina. So let me present to some and introduce to others Prophetess Deborah Capers. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Just sometimes I still get a little shook up. I get a little shook up when I hear prophetess before my name because I was called everything else but prophetess before he put his hands on me. Amen. And I behaved like everything else but a prophetess before he put his hands on me. So I'm so blessed to be here. I'm so blessed that they're seeing that some of Yahweh is seen in me. I want to give honor to who honor is due to the women of Yahweh that are stewarding this, to the women of Yahweh that said yes to the call of the Lord so that we can be present here tonight to just adore our Lord and Savior, just to just adore what he has done for us. Amen. And I was humbled with Minister Keisha said, she said, uh-huh, I caught you. <laughs> I caught you because I'm all right being in a corner somewhere with the Lord by myself. It feels safer there. But there's a season for walking in your authentic self, right? And in order to do that, you can't suggest somebody else do that if you're not willing to do that yourself. And so no more hiding, no more running, no more um, resisting what thus saith the Lord, because I don't want to be the prune. I don't want to be the fig tree that he curses because I produce no fruit. Amen. And so she was giving me the word, I thirst. And I said, Lord, I, you know, I'm going to need you to talk to me because what I don't want to do and what I don't want to be is cliche. I don't want to say what is expected to be said. I want to say what you're saying. I want to, I want to speak what you're speaking, Father. So I humble myself before you so that you can say what it is that you need to say tonight so that you can, re so you can give us a revelation that you would like to give us tonight. Or you could just remind us, Father, what it is that you are saying to us tonight from the mighty thing that you allowed your son to do on the cross. And it's humble to be a vessel, right? Because there are so many means and ways that we have allowed ourselves to be tainted and yet him still he washes us and he washes us so that he can still use us. So it's, it's just a blessing. So in my head, I heard the messages that was taught during Holy Week with Thirst. I said, Lord, I want to unlearn. I don't want to, I don't want to remember any of that. What are you saying? And what he blessed me with, I'm, I'm going to go to where it was. I started in John. I feel his presence. I started in John 19 and 28. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and read that. Hi, Cheyenne. If you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and read that. It says, and I'm reading from the uh, King James Version. It says, after this, no, wait, look, I'm going to start with 26. I'm going to start with 26. It said, when Yeshua therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. And then said, he said to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. 28. After this, Yahshua, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Mm -hmm. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with the vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Father, we thank you for the revelation that you are um, speaking unto us in our spirits and our souls. Let it be that we are not only here to hear, but to add here to how you are enlightening our spirits even now. 
what, let me, what, what blessed me is that the father wasn't, and, and he, the woman of Yahweh, she just said, flow with the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit said to you. And with the, the words that the father causes me to highlight when I'm in his word are the words that oftentimes we ignore. Come on, Holy Spirit. And the words that oftentimes would prevent, prevent us from staying in the wilderness longer than, from, from, from bearing crosses longer than, yes? And it was when and then after. He pointed those things at to, at to me. And it came after while he was yet on the cross, he was fulfilling his role and his purpose and his divine purpose for why he was here on the cross. And then from the cross, come on here, he was making things and putting things in line. Yes, because from the cross. So here you have nails in your hands. You have nails in your feet. You have been scourged. You have been spit on you in the high noon of the day. You've been hanging there for hours and you have the audacity to be aware of the need of the woman who mothered you. You have the audacity to be aware of setting her in position so that she won't be left in a society that would deem her um, uh, null and void, that would deem her impoverished, that would deem her subject to the harms of the world and the injustices of the world if she didn't have a covering because he knew his cover, he knew his role as her covering was transitioning. Can somebody say transitioning? His role was transitioning. So he put in place. So while on the cross, he served from the cross to put in place what it is that was necessary to put in place for his mother and the disciple and what he loved. And then he said, after, somebody say after, because oftentimes they said, does what does the cart come before the horse? Does the horse, which comes first? But he said, after he did that, then he said, knowing that all things had been fulfilled, then he said, I thirst. But he didn't say I thirst just to only determine that he was all human. He was all divine and he was all human, right? He was all divine and he was all human. So we would think that he was thirsty so that his thirst could be quenched, that his esophagus could be wet, that his tongue could get from the roof of his mouth. As Psalm 69, let us know that, that his tongue was so partial, it was to the roof of his mouth and they gave him gall. And then if you look into Matthew 27 to 34, if you look into those verses and verse 38, um, help me, Holy Spirit, 27 verses 27 to 34. If you pay attention to that, Matthew had a different account, but he had a, his account was a little thorough as he was offered something to drink before. Somebody say before. He was offered something to drink before, but he didn't accept the drink then because he had to fulfill the promise and he had to fulfill the scripture and he had to fulfill the word. I feel your presence, Lord. And he had to fulfill the word which had been spoken in the messianic in the messianic Psalms, it was spoken in the Old Testament. So the father understood that he came to fulfill. The father remained, Yahshua remained authentic to who he was, even on the cross, even at the cross, even from the cross. So when he, I be sure that he was thirsty. They said he hung from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Hallelujah. They said he endured all that pain and he didn't ask for anything because it wasn't time. So the father, he said, I thirst in a timely manner. So his timing was essential. He, he considered time. Timing. He considered the request that he needed to make to fulfill the, the prophecy. Then he considered the response that would transpire, that would further, come on here, fulfill the prophecy of offering up a sacrificial lamb. He did all of this. He was he was intricate in my shy, shinaya. He was intricate about his timing in spite of the excruciating pain. And he did that for you and me. And we so impatient. We're impatient. We want what we want now. We want what we want when we want it, how we want it. But Yahshua showed us. He, he he gave us an example. He exemplified the power of timing because if he would have took the drink earlier, it would have been premature because they needed to cast his lots. They needed first to they needed first to rent his clothes. See, there were some things that needed to transpire, even though he was thirsty hours before. Come on here. Is anybody hearing what's being said? So his his intricate timing was essential for the fulfillment of the scripture. So in spite of the excruciating pain, in spite of him feeling like the father had forsaken him, in spite of being scorched by the son, in spite of him being beaten to unrecord, being unrecognizable, in spite of all of what he dealt with humanly, his, he didn't allow his flesh in Messiah to override what his spirit knew he came to do. So he fulfilled what he knew he needed to fulfill, even in the timing of his request. And I don't even, the Lord is, is, is letting me understand that it wasn't even a request. It was a, it was, it was a, a con, it was a, a expression of what he knew the response would be to the I thirst. So he knew that they was going to respond in the natural. But his, his, him saying that he, he 
thirsted was so that he can fill what he was meant to fulfill in the spiritual so that you and I now by faith, by confession, by faith can now come into the father through Christ Yahshua because of what he suffered and a minute for, or, or earlier or an hour earlier or, or an hour later, come on here, timing would have been off. And so because he gave up the ghost and then he said, now there was set a vessel of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and they put it on a hyssop. And if anybody know we the scripture, David said, created me a clean heart, renewing me a righteous spirit. Then he, David said, Lord, purge me like hyssop. Yes, purge me like hyssop, holy one of Israel. And hyssop was symbolizing, was symbolic of cleansing. Him, hyssop was symbolizing of purification. So not only did the father wait until after he served from the cross, but while, while he was serving on the cross, while he was fulfilling his position on the cross, he served from the cross. Then he made the request or he made the statement that he understood would create a response to co completely fulfill the sacrifice that's essential for making sure that the last sacrifice that there will be no need for another sacrifice. There won't be another need. Anybody hear what's being said? There's no need for no more sacrifices. So while you on lines and they telling you that you need to make this sacrifice that so you can be blessed, go ahead and take them back to the word because the last sacrifice so that you can be saved, the last sacrifice so that you can be redeemed, the last sacrifice so that you can be delivered, the last sacrifice so that you can have a relationship with the Lord has already been fulfilled, it's been done. He said it is finished, right? So I don't need to stand on a thousand dollar line. I don't need to stand on a $500 line. I don't need to stand on a $750 line. I don't need to give up my life bill. Why? Because it is finished. Hallelujah. Now give honor where honor is due, but I don't need to purchase a blessing because I was already purchased with a price. Anybody hearing what the Holy One of Israel say? So him saying, I thirst. So the Holy One of Israel, when he when he was given uh, vinegar, he was given vinegar on the hyssop, which, which again symbolizes the cleansing. And if we go back to Exodus, come on. If we go to Exodus 12 and 21, it is what they did. Exodus 12 and 21, the Holy Spirit told them to dip the hyssop in the blood and to put it on the doors, which indicated uh, the purification. They were now pure. So now the death angel, anybody hearing what the Holy One of Israel is saying? Because remember, they didn't kill him. He gave up the ghost. They couldn't kill him. He gave up the ghost. So he touched him symbolically on the mouth with the hyssop, indicating purification, indicating cleansing, indicating, come on here, is because that was the lamb. And in the in the Old Testament, when it was that they had to bring the, 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 the scripture says, come on, let's go to the scripture. So y'all know I'm not just, I'm not just talking. I'm a little hype. I'm from New York. Y'all forgive me. That's, that's just, I'm sorry. That's just, I'm, I said, Lord, please don't let me talk fast and all excited. Lord, please let me just say what you're saying. Let me be dainty about this, Father. But how be hot? That's not my authentic me. Anybody hearing what's being said? That's not my authentic me. My authentic me is excited about what he done. My authentic me is excited that he considered me. My authentic me is excited that he went through all that he went through for me. In spite of the times I ignored him, in spite of the times I rebelled, in spite of the times I was defiant, in spite of the times anybody hearing what's being said, and he still did that for me. So Exodus 12. 21, it said, then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb. <laughs> Who is on the cross? Who is on the cross? Who is on the cross? Take you a lamb according to your families and kill the and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel, the doorpost and the two side posts with the blood that it is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of this house until the morning. That was symbolic of making, of saying that he, we were, he was covered. And so the lamb was on the cross, the, at the sacrificial lamb, the purified lamb, the most pure lamb, the most unblemished lamb. And so Lord, the Lord said, I didn't come to do away with it. I came to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. I came to fulfill it. And so even that, he was so intricate. He said, not one tittle of his word, not one tittle of his word should go undone. And even the Lord, he waited until even that was done. And so I thirst required that movement. I thirst would, would, would provoke that last movement. And he said, it is finished. Come on here. Is anybody hearing what the father is saying? It is done. And his is, is for the cleansing, for the delivering, for the redeeming and for the storing. And Yahshua gives us the most prime example of follow through. Can somebody say follow through? Of integrity. Come on here. Of doing the will of the father, even when it hurts. 
doing the will of the Father even when it's not favorable, doing the will of the Father even when it doesn't feel good, doing the will of the Father when nobody else understands. He said he's the son of God. Why don't he take himself down? Come on here. He said he's the son of God. Why don't he free himself? She says she's a woman of God. Why she's struggling? He said he's a man of God. Why he's dealing? Anybody hearing? He said he's the, but until, until the, until it is finished, until you are, have satisfied the purpose and the fulfillment of the role, until you have satisfied what's been written by the side of your name. Come on here. Anybody hearing what the Lord is saying? Until, somebody say until, until. Hallelujah. And then, because mm -hmm, the words we ignored, after, until, then, and when. So when you have fulfilled, then, after you have fulfilled, then. Anybody hearing what's being said this evening? So there was a, Yahshua, the, the account in Matthew lets us know that he refused vine the vinegar and the drink pr previously because it wasn't the right time. It wouldn't have been the fulfillment thereof. You now we know the people they wasn't concerned about Yahshua being thirsty after all the trauma that you put him through. Now you're concerned about him being thirsty. And not only did you give him vinegar, but you, you you gave him some gall. That's what Matthew says. But John is telling us that they just put some vinegar on some hyssop and they put it to his mouth. It was then that he took. Come on here. The, he took it when they put it on the hyssop. Then he didn't take it. Prior to that, because it wouldn't have fulfilled the word and it wouldn't fulfill the prophecy and it wouldn't fulfill what was spoken throughout the ages and throughout the prophets. So that what Yahshua, so the people that were on looking can know that the word of the Lord is true and that the father does live. And though he died, though he he, he died, he gave up his ghost and he was buried and then he was resurrected. Amen. So that the account thereof can be that we are sure in our in our in our everything that we are sure and that our relationship can be more than the religion that has resurrected and that our relationship can be more than the cliques that resurrects and our relationships can be more than being seen and being heard but the authenticity uh, us walking in our divine authenticity is so essential in this hour because it is now that the father is separating the weird wheat from the tear and we're not going to be able to to you know if yashua was thirsty before, right? We, I made mention that Yahshua was thirsty before. He wasn't going to be able to determine that that was the time. Mm -hmm. There was uh, still some things that, so we can attempt to be presumptuous in our walk if we want to. We can pretend, we can go ahead and be presumptuous in our vision if we want to, but until it's time, beloved, the fulfillment, until we fulfilled it precisely according to the letter, it, it won't be manifested. And we're not talking about the way the word, they're talking about the universe manifested a thing, but we're talking about the will of Yahweh being manifested in our lives. So what did I get from the father saying that he thirsted? I got the dynamics of then, and even in suffering, I'm called to serve. Come on here. Because he was suffering and he served. He said, he said, mother, meet your son, his side. He said, son, meet your mother, your both side. He served in the midst of his suffering. He served, hallelujah. And yes, we know that his suffering was indicative of what he took for us, but even in the midst of it, he could have made up his mind and said, you know what, this is enough. He didn't have to make sure that things was aligned, but he aligned it even from his place of greatest, his greatest discomfort. What a model he gave to us. So not only did I see the dynamic of I thirst, that which shows up in the Holy Weeks, scriptures and the seven things that the Holy One of Israel said, he might have only said a few words, but he did a whole lot in the midst of those words. Amen. He did so much in the midst of this word. And one of the greatest things that he did is he made it so that we have a home eternal, a home eternal with our father that we're not necessarily worthy of. Hallelujah. But we're going to accept the, we're going to accept what he's offered unto us and how he adopted us into the to the family that we are heirs to the throne in this in this, this season of our life, Amen. So let us not um, allow the circumstances of life, Hallelujah. Let us not allow the circumstances of life to forget the greatest gift that is still beset us. It's still it's still upon us. It's we're still waiting for it. Come on here, we're still waiting for the fulfillment of the salvation of that which transpired here. On the, on the cross. Amen. So we just thank you, Lord, for just 
reminding us how much you loved us and reminding us all that you did on the cross and from the cross and after the cross. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, Lord, for the women of Yahweh that presented an opportunity for us to come together and for us to delve in your word. And for those of you that may be just j- jumping on, sh- check out um, John 19, 26 through 30. Check out Exodus 12, 21 to 12. Check out 69, Psalm 69, 21. Because of the time frame, we don't have time to really delve into it. But understand this, that the father, every word that he spoke was purposeful. It wasn't even about his own self. It was purposeful. Yes, he understood they didn't have no gallon of fresh deer park water waiting for him. He understood that. Come on here. He understood what was there waiting. Come on. He understood that. But he said that and he did that so that the scripture should be fulfilled. And he said that's what it was, right? And now it was not only what was said, it was when it was said and what happened after it was said. Come on here. Not only what was said, it was when it was said and what happened after it was said. What are you saying? More shy, more shy. What are you saying? What is what you saying producing and what is happening after you say what you say? Woo! Come on here. That came from the Holy Ghost. What are you saying? What is it producing? Why why are you saying what you say? Come on here. What are you saying? Is what you saying out of wisdom? Is what you saying purposeful? If what you saying aligned, because what Christ said was aligned. (laughs) What Christ said was a door opener. What Christ said, come on here, led us into the next level of, of, of the gospel of which is what our salvation. Anybody hear what the father is saying tonight? So be mindful of what you say, women and men of Yahweh, because what you say is opening a door to something and or someone. The question is who? (laughs) The question is who? The question is who? So Deborah is watching her mouth these days. I have a, mm, I got one of that, one of those things going on. I thank you for having me. I bless Yahweh for you. And I pray that you were blessed by something that was said on tonight. Amen. Amen. And I pray I didn't go over. (laughs) Blessings, 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 blessings. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you. I can't hear you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Yes. You know, I am. I'm speechless. And you can't hear me. Okay. I am speechless right now and it is I I, I knew you know I, I'm sitting here and like the other night I wanted to just uh, uh run and hug my other speakers and I, I knew tonight was just it was just going to be juicy and delicious amen um I I am so excited uh that I thank you and I thank God for your yes, Prophetess Deborah. Um I tell you it is your passion and your yes that you know that just fires me. It, it, it ignites me and it gets me hyped and excited and the word of God that you deliver. Thank you so much. And for those of you that are listening tonight before we close out before I turn over to the hands of our sister Juanita um, if you want a closer walk with God or if you want to turn your life over to Jesus Christ to accept him into your heart you can do so now I'm not telling you like I've told you the other night you know once you say you know Yes, Lord, I want you into my life. It it does not mean that life is going to be easy. It does not mean that you are not going to have any trials and tribulations because we are not greater than Jesus. Amen. We are not greater than him. So why should we not be able to endure and deal with the things of life because he gives us the tools and the utensils we need to encounter and to overcome them. Amen. So if you want to accept the Lord into your life, just say this prayer. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and into my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. He's not asking us to do cartwheels and to do flips and, and calisthenics and stuff like that. He just wants us to be truthful, honest, and faithful to him as he is with us because he has already accepted us. He created us. We are his. He is ours. Okay. But we must confess and, 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 and put in that request with our mouths. Amen. Amen. So I just want to call our minister Juanita on right quick uh, so we can continue on with our service. <laughs> Thank you so much, Minister Peterson. Um, what I am going to do is, you know, we had an awesome, awesome speaker um, on this evening. And again, like we have done um, all week, um, we, again, I, like I said before, the speakers did not ask for this. It's something that we are doing for them. And that is we want you to sow into our speakers. You know, they took the time. They took the initiative. They labored and, you know, waited for God to deliver that download so that it could be beneficial to you. So for Prophetess Capers, her um, cash app is um, dollar sign, all capital letters, S-Y-C-I-M. Whether you are watching us live, whether you're listening to us on the replay, um, if anything that is said that has touched you, has elevated you, we want you to sow into our speakers. Because you know what? They could have done something else. They could have decided not to answer the call. They could have decided that they had better things to do, but they answered the call and they was obedient and they delivered a word that could change your life. So we want you to sow into them. We're not asking for a specific amount. We want you to sow into them. We're not saying what it is. So again, don't go to them and be like, oh my gosh. They're... No, they don't even know. They didn't even know. So we want you to sow into um, the speakers as well. So what I am going to do is I am going to bring back Minister Peterson because she is going to announce, um, introduce our topics and speakers for tomorrow night, which is the final night. We're going to have the last two sayings. And she will then close us out in preparation for tomorrow. Minister Peterson. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. I am so looking forward to. I tell you, if you have not been able to uh, join us throughout the week, starting on Sunday, you can catch all of the replays on my on Absolute Word Ministries Facebook page, on the event page, on Restore to Life Ministries page. You can catch all of those. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm hearing the feedback, but that's okay. You can catch all of those uh, replays because I encourage each and every one of you to go on back and listen. Amen. So, tomorrow night, my God, tomorrow night we are in for a treat. We are in for a double header on tomorrow night. And we are going to have our apostle, Dr. Marilyn E. Porter. She will be coming forth with It Is Finished. It is finished. I am so excited. I can't wait. And then following, immediately following Dr. Porter, none other than our very own host of the week, Minister Juanita E. Gaynor, my sister, my friend, my partner. <laughs> Thank you. She will be coming forth with Father into thy hands, I commend my spirit. My God, I tell you, we this, my, I keep calling them my speakers, but I only call them that because they said yes. 
to to my request. <laughs> Amen. Dave, my heart is overwhelmed and it's overwhelmed with happiness, excitement, and joy. So we are not going to close out tonight, tomorrow night. We will be saying our final so longs until the next time. But for tonight, we will see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, the same place, same location. If you can't find us, hit me up on Facebook. Hit Minister Juanita up on Facebook. We will direct you exactly where you can go to catch us live. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for joining us this week on the Moving Pasture Radio Show. Make sure to visit our website at www.movingpastyou.com where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes. If you found value in the show, rate us on iTunes or simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in next Thursday for our next episode. And remember to always be kind in your word, your thought, and in your deed. Be blessed.